War in the universe as you imagine it is very, very rare. It may occur in uncharted regions where two opposing nations may fight over the spoils of a world or set of resources that they both value. But in highly developed parts of space, such conflicts are not permitted. Here resource exploration and exploitation must happen under certain conditions that do not generate war, conflict or instability between the resident nations of those regions. In this sense, the greater community is a different environment than you are accustomed to. It has achieved a sustainable state, at least in your region of space regarding those nations that you will encounter. In uncharted regions, it can be much more unstable, and conflict can erupt dramatically. But eventually nations realize that war and conflict destroy resources. And resources are what they must acquire and preserve, so other means are sought to persuade one another, beyond the use of force. This is why the powers of persuasion and perception have been established to a very high degree throughout many regions of the universe. We know of few exceptions to this in very highly inhabited regions. Once nations realize they cannot fight each other without mutual loss, they will enter into cooperative agreements and they will maintain these agreements very strictly over long periods of time. These are the conditions that you will face in engaging with your local universe. That is why your recklessness, your aggressiveness and your use of force are looked upon with such disdain and concern by established nations in your region. Here you will not be allowed to exert such aggression beyond this solar system. This restraint between established nations serves to check aggression and to limit the spread of war and conflict. This is proven to be effective in the universe, and thus it is practiced. Your unity here gives you strength and gives you respect in the eyes of others. Other nations will be far less likely to try to persuade you through inappropriate means or even through means that are allowed within the laws of this region if they have to face a united and discerning race of beings. If the human family can establish such unity of purpose and gain a greater education about life in the universe which we are providing to you through these sets of briefings, then any attempt at intervention or persuasion here will be far more difficult. But as it is at this moment, you have your backs to space, you are not paying attention, you are not looking. And those of you who are looking often look under the persuasion of your own desires and preferences without the clarity of vision that is required. In a more united state, you will preserve your resources and share them equitably because you will have realized that you must establish a state of stability and security. What other nations in the universe have established to maintain peace and equanimity is what humanity will have to establish within your own world. The choice here is fundamental. It is the greatest choice you will have to make. And it will have to be made repeatedly to choose either war and conflict or agreement and cooperation. Your duck lining resources will help you in this regard. For if any nation in your world seeks to remain aggressive and hostile, its resources can be denied to it by the rest of the world. This is what happens in the greater community should any nation become aggressive and hostile, seeking to dominate or overwhelm other nations, seeking conquest of territory or seeking to eliminate its competitors. Such a nation will have to face a united opposition by all others who are involved in their networks of trade. This has effectively eliminated a great deal of conflict in the universe. It is necessity then that drives such cooperation. Yet humanity has not yet established such agreements, for it is not to face what all advancing nations in the universe must face, and that is the depletion of their resources. It is resource depletion that has the possibility of forging a greater union amongst your peoples. Yet resource depletion can also lead to competition, conflict and war. 
There are many nations that we know of and have heard of that have destroyed themselves at the doorstep of the greater community struggling over who will have dominance, who will have wealth and who will have priority within their own worlds. Unity for a race must be established sooner or later. It can be established through submission and domination or through consensus and wisdom. This too represents a fundamental choice. Unfortunately, most nations that we know of, and certainly most nations in this region of space, have chosen the former option, choosing the submission and domination of their peoples to establish a unity of purpose and to crush dissent. Free nations, which are so rare in the universe, have chosen consensus and wisdom as their overriding need and emphasis. Humanity in facing the decline of your resources and the spoiling of your world will have to make this decision as well as to what kind of unity it will establish. If you do not establish unity, you will simply destroy the remaining resources and greatly limit humanity's ability to live in this world. Other races do not want to see this occur, and so part of their emphasis on intervention is to prevent the destruction of the natural environment which they hold to be far more valuable than the human presence here. Yet you must understand that those races who are competing for access to this world do not want to destroy the human family, for they need you as their liaisons to work in this world. They are unable to live within this world, unable to live in its environment, unable to face the biological hazard of its countless organisms. Races that have evolved in sterile environments cannot live in worlds such as yours without immense hazard and without the great risk of contaminating not only themselves, but also their home worlds with foreign biological agents, to which they have no immunity and which their medicines have not yet evolved to counteract. Therefore, humanity is valuable to intervening races, valuable as a workforce, valuable as those who can work in the world for the benefit of foreign powers, but this benefit will not be yours. And should you lose your freedom to foreign intervention and persuasion, the life it would create for you would be truly tragic and unfortunate. In the greater community, all advancing nations have faced the problem of resource depletion. As a result, resource acquisition and the stability and sustainability of resource acquisition have become the overriding emphasis. Nations that have advanced technology that requires resources from foreign places become extremely dependent upon maintaining access to these resources and to establishing peaceful and diplomatic relations with those who supply them. Here advanced technology makes you even more vulnerable to foreign persuasion and control. If you need rare elements that can only be found in remote regions or which are only possessed by certain races, then you must accommodate their needs, demands and preferences in order to be privileged to receive such resources. The competition for these resources would be intense. This makes any nation that has such needs vulnerable and at great risk of instability and even collapse. If the technology and structure of society are dependent upon foreign manufacture and foreign resources, then it is vulnerable. It is this vulnerability that humanity must seek to avoid. Do not be foolish in accepting gifts from those who are visiting your world. Do not be persuaded that you must have this foreign technology for your own benefit. If you do accept such things, you will become vulnerable. Unable now to provide for yourselves, you will have to meet the terms of those who have become your providers. Here freedom and self-sufficiency become intertwined. If you are not self-sufficient, you will not be free. Even if you were able to gain from others access to those resources to which you have become accustomed and upon which you have built the infrastructure of your new society, you would lose your freedom. You would lose any leverage you have over how you will engage with others and what the terms of that engagement will be. This represents an essential understanding that you must have in approaching the greater community.